Okay, uh, good morning, good afternoon, and to some friends, maybe good evening. Thank you for joining us at today's webinar. I'm Su Fei Li, the Senior Manager for China Programs at CNMS4. Today's webinar and the next, including the next two sessions on April 8th and 15th, are sponsored by the Chinese Embassy in the United States. It is really our great honor to work with Madame Yang Xingyu, the Minister Counselor of Education, and her team to make the webinars work and to make the scholarship work for institution, US institutions and our faculty members. Senem Espo is really happy to be to take the responsibility uh, for the management and the facilitation process of the application. At today's webinar, you will learn the details about ASSDI, the American Short-Term Study in China Initiative. This particular scholarship uh, information and how to apply. But the next two sessions will be focusing on various scholarship opportunities for American students offered by uh, organizations and institutions in China. We will also invite participating institutions, US institutions and the scholarship recipients to share their experiences uh, during the next two sessions. So now let's welcome Madame Yang Xiyu to introduce the American short term Study in China Initiative. Please, Xin Yu. Thank you, Sufi, and good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, uh, welcome to this uh, session of uh, introduction of the program that we uh, worked out uh, about uh, a year and a half ago with ACE, with ASQ. Uh, to try to bring more American students to study uh, in China. Uh, I know uh, we are still in this pandemic and we are facing a lot of challenges, uh, but I, I am sure everybody will agree with me that in the past 40 years, the uh, student exchanges, the faculty exchange and the educational exchange really benefited uh, to our two countries. Uh, I know in the past, few years, the educational collaboration environment was really damaged. Uh, we saw the uh, students exchange, the number of student exchanges declined. We saw um, American students, the number of Amer uh, student, American students learning Chinese declined. And we saw um, American studies, students study abroad uh, the number of the students going to Ireland even more than going to China. Uh, we, with all these challenges, uh, we have these challenges, we have these difficulties and the two countries in this uh, uh, situation uh, is kind of low profile that is, is kind of a, uh, a difficult time in the, in the relationship. But we still see um, the bright part especially as a educators, we really want to provide more opportunities with our young uh, students because they are going to see, facing 
and even more challenging world in the future. So what we prepared for the students is, is really, I feel is really uh, the response uh, ability. Uh, I know for American students, they're very comfortable at home. Why go abroad? Why, uh, why should they take this, those challenges? But I, I do believe, and, and I'm a, a true believer of international cooperation and interna internationalization. Uh, I do believe um, study abroad really uh, bring you a new world, a new window or, or, or new doors for you. And uh, young students, they explore the world. They know more about the world. Uh, they could definitely better prepare themselves to face the challenges uh, in, the, in the future uh, in their life. Uh, it, it's interesting that recently I watched a, 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 a TV, uh, a, 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 actually a webinar. Uh, people talk about China now. There are a lot of things about China. And this uh, gentleman uh, comment is really interesting. He said, there are two kinds of people in the world. One, they don't like China or they even hate China. The other is they have never, they've been to China. So it's interesting to, to see how you change your mind when um, actually when you have been to China, if, if you have spent some time uh, in China. So I, as education uh, counselor uh, at the uh, Chinese embassy, I really, my mission is really want to uh, bring the two uh, young, I mean, the young students from the two sides more closer to each other uh, by bringing more uh, American students to study uh, in China. So with that bear in mind, uh, when, when I took office uh, about two and a half years ago, and I saw um, there are so many uh, resources, scholarships available, but not taken. And but then you, uh, when I travel to universities and I always hear uh, those um, comments like, uh, we want to uh, explore the opportunities for our students. We want to do more exchange with China. We want our students to study in China. But then you didn't see many uh, programs really designed for the need of the students. For instance, there are scholarships uh, programs for, you can, you can go for one semester, you can go for one year, but student won't take it. Um, they don't want to go for that long to a country that not, they're not familiar with and they don't know much about. Uh, to go to a system, an education system, to the, go institution that they don't familiar, they're not familiar with. So I, uh, we, we worked with uh, many institutions, we, we talked with many faculty, and we found one model that's really happening uh, among US institutions. Many institutions have a faculty-led uh, study abroad program in China. So visit the University of Virginia and, and many others. And I saw many faculty uh, arranging their students uh, study in China program. But actually they were doing their own program, just to bring them students to have this program in China. It just actually just uh, a different location to have the, the, their own program. So then we thought about why not we uh, worked based on those kind of uh, uh, programs and uh, uh, bring in some Chinese element. For instance, those programs, those American faculty led programs in China, always their prof own professor teach their own program in China without any interaction with Chinese students, without any interaction with uh, Chinese professors. So we thought, why not design a program uh, based on your faculty-led program that added some elements, like you can, you can open to Chinese students. Uh, you can have some uh, uh, Chinese faculty also teach uh, on that program. And it's become a kind of a, uh, it's kind of a collaborative run program. And then by doing that, because you added the Chinese element, you have Chinese professors teaching the program. And then this program will be eligible for the Chinese scholarship program, especially for the short-term uh, credit uh, scholarship programs, exactly uh, what the, uh, uh, the uh, US faculty-led 
programs. So we worked out on that. We 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 uh, uh, consulted with ACE, then with uh, ASQ when uh, Sufi was working there, and also Sufi uh, checked uh, this kind of model with their uh, member institutions and immediately get respond that it is uh, something that U.S. students will be uh, like. It's a short term. Uh, it could be sh as short as four weeks. Uh, and it's credited. Um, so then we came up with came up with this kind of design that the Chinese and U.S. Uh, institution you can you can work together and work out a, a kind of program uh, that is uh, short term that the, the credit will be uh, uh, recognized by U.S. institutions and uh, it's it's much more organized uh, uh, program. And they were talking with uh, the Chinese Ministry of Education. Uh, because there are already uh, a, lot, a, a lot of scholarships available, not taken. So we worked out uh, this kind of a, a American short-term study in China initiative that uh, Sufi will be later on uh, talking about this program in, in details. Uh, and we also interest very uh, uh, much of grateful that uh, we can work with Sam Namas 4 uh, which uh, uh, Sufi did this, uh, their China uh, program to work with us. Uh, we actually entrusted them to help us to manage uh, such a program uh, that we hope we can bring uh, more US students uh, to study uh, in China. So I think I will stop here and uh, I'll let Su Sufi to talk about details about the program, the application procedures, uh, and then we'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Xin Yu. Um, I'm really um, appreciated and I fully agree with you because that's all I feel. I had a similar experiences when we work with American universities. They're hoping that there'll be more resources available for the students. However, when, I, when we brought, uh, brought our groups to visit China, the Chinese institutions will always say, we work on American students, we have scholarships, but from our side in the US, we feel like we don't have the information. So there's some, because when there's a demand and when the needs, and we need somewhere in the middle to make a connection. And that's how I really appreciate, I'm so um, happy to work with the embassy to um, promote this um, initiative. And I will share with you, uh, about the information. Okay, I will using this. Okay, as you can see, this is called ASSCI, it's American Short-Term Study in China Initiative. Um, this is, the, this is um, a faculty-led program. So what we are here to apply is we will need a program led by faculty members. And uh, um, here's the, let's talk about the scholarship details first. The scholarship will cover the tuition at the Chinese institution and on-campus accommodations health insurance and a monthly stipend. But it does not cover the tuition at American universities. And, sorry, and it, it sorry. And it doesn't, it does not cover the international airfare and the China visa application. So who are, what is the eligibility for applying for it? Uh, one thing we want to make it clear is this is for the American faculty to apply for through the program approval. The program must be co-designed and co-taught with Chinese partner institutions. Um, and then um, will be 50% of the 
delivered or happened, activities happened in, with Chinese partner institutions. Uh, the program must be offered, as uh, Xianyi mentioned, it will be a credit, it is a credit bearing. That means the students will receive credits by taking this program. Um, this program is, um, has to be at least four weeks long and no more than one academic year. And also, if you register to this program, it will need to be at least 60 students registered for this program and no more than 30 students. So uh, that's the general requirements. Um, what we are looking at now is uh, we can start, the application starts immediately and uh, it, the due date for submitting the, the, the application is May 15th. This is specifically for the academic year 2021-22, from now until next summer, basically. Um, the timeline is that send the application a proposal by May 15th, and by June 30th, you if you submit it, you'll hear from the embassy whether your proposal is approved or not. If you got approved, you have the whole summer uh, or after the fall semester starts to promote the program on campus to uh, enroll the students. And uh, for when we start with this fall semester, um, what students can start with registration and you will know who will register for your course and plan to go uh, to China for this short-term study. Um, by January 20th, the student online application for scholarship at the website. So once, this, once your proposal is approved, then all the students registered for your class will go to online, apply for the scholarship. That's the, 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 the procedure. Um, how do you plan for your students? This most popular plan is like uh, the summer session. We see most of the, um, the study abroad programs led by faculty or without faculty are happening in the summer. So once uh, you got approved, students apply, got the scholarship, most of the, 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 the students probably the, will go during the summer session. But it is optional if this is a one semester long program and you plan to have the last four weeks in China to be considered as a three credits or whatever the credits you, de you decide to um, for this class. It's also possible for the end of spring semester in April or May. Um, where is, I want to show you is the, um, here is the application. Um, we have this online application. It talks about the scholarship. And uh, when, uh, when you go through it, make sure those are all hyperlinks. And uh, it is, the, when you select a partner institutions, make sure this Chinese partner is listed here. Let's take a look at it here. So make sure your partner institutions are listed here on this list. That's one criteria. And then, oops, second. We talked about the, this details. The tuition is covered on campus accommodation and uh, uh, health insurance, the stipend, um, also, the scholarship does not cover the American, uh, the student paid the tuition for the American university and international airfare and visa applications. And we talk about who should, uh, when you submitted the, the proposal, what are the details, criteria? And then um, here is this, the, the guideline. If when you have, we will send you the link. So going to this proposal form 
And when you click it here, you it is a very um, um, obvious information request that you need to fill out the form. It goes by uh, one by one. Fill Pre pretty much the information is who you are. You are the faculty, and um, I I will not go details in here, but it will be who you are uh, and who it. What is your institution, um, and what is the program? The program description, and also who are your partner institutions, and who are the faculty in the partner institutions, and uh, submit a this detailed uh, brief description of the course, and how many it includes how many credits you the you 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 give for this course, and how many students you plan to enroll. And uh, <clears throat> do you plan to have like a, in a in a spring or summer, or if you want to have a special proposal for the winter, we'll work out with you. So we need a detailed this information uh, through this proposal form. And then we're trying to work out here's the signatures. <clears throat> this is because this is the institutional participation. So we want the, the institution be aware of this, class, this course and this program. So we will need the institutions, a uh, um, couple of signatures from the leading faculty from the US and department chair and director or your, basically your study abroad program office. Similar things in Chinese, with your Chinese partner institutions, we will need to get their uh, signatures for approval. And uh, um, <clears throat> once we have that part uh, submitted to the um, to us, and uh, um, as we talk about this, the deadline is May 15th, and you'll be notified by June 30th. And then embassy will organize a selection committee. We will evaluate, uh, it's among it's open to all the US participating institutions. So um, once we select the, the, have gathered all the applications, the embassy will organize the selection committee. Once you are selected to get approval, then you can inform all your students registered for this course to apply the online. Here is another link. That's where the the students, individual students, needs to su submit. Oops, this doesn't work. Because if you see it doesn't work, you probably need to uh, copy and paste. Sometimes it's. Uh, if it doesn't work, you just need to copy and paste or do it again, then it will work. See, it's working. And this is where, this is the application, uh, the actual scholarship application starts here. And you click on here to have the students enter the different um, set account, enter their information and apply. We will do a, um, we will, we will provide a, a guidance for how to apply for the scholarship with all the procedures. So that's where the link is. And um, this, this is generally about the, um, the, the procedures. And we will, oh, because I know you have all kinds of questions, please type in the questions in the, um, I'll stop sharing here. Type the questions in the Q&A and we will try to answer uh, all the questions. I know there are different um, uh, questions. Uh, already we see a lot and uh, we will give um, all the detailed explanations to, to try to uh, answer all the questions. Um, okay, I see already do we need a more formal relationship or okay here is um
there are lots of questions coming. Um, Xin Yu, do you want to explain a little bit first about how we, um, about the, the, the students and uh, um, based upon sure. all the questions with the details and I will, I will also um, Shall we, um, shall we go, just go with the, the questions? I, I see the first one. Do we need to form a relationship or at that? I can see at the way, uh, very list of conversation with the Chinese university listed and arrange programmatic elements with them before applying for the scholarship or can those details be coordinated after special admission? Uh, I think you, you need to, um, have a relationship first, because uh, if you look at the eligibility, uh, you need to um, submit all the information about your partner institution, how the program are designed um, before you can uh, submit the proposal. So yes, you, you, you need to uh, have a relationship first because you have to, you know, all those details. I know this year be a bit uh, um, rush, in a rush, uh, but yeah, that's, is that the necessary? Uh, um, yes. So the I second think... one, are the Chinese universities listed on the website or where the US institution? Um, I think most of them, yes, because they are they are working on uh, credit scholarship programs anyway. That's programs for for many years, but. Um, again, I think it's similar with the, the, the previous question. Um, you had to work with your part Chinese partners before you can apply for the program. Um, we understand, we know that some, this kind of questions will come up. What, what we can help is that's why how um, um, CENMS4 can work with the embassy and uh, because um, previously, and we have, I also work with um, through organizations like ASQ, we have a group of universities and we have partner institutions in China. So in general, if you want to apply for this, uh, if you want to submit a proposal for approval, you need to have a Chinese partner. But if you don't, if you are a teaching faculty, you have the study abroad program, uh, but you don't have a partner yet. Uh, we could help you to if you provide a description of the courses uh, with the detailed information to fill that um, like a partner seeking application form, uh, we will be happy to work with uh, the Chinese um, embassy. And that because you hear the next two sessions, you'll see we have different organizations and Chinese institutions who are willing to work with the American universities. So if you don't have a partner, but you have a program, it's possible that we'll be happy to find a partner for you. And once you work out the articulation, if the part, your partner institution, the faculty from your partner institution uh, agrees to work with you, then you can submit this proposal and get approved. So that's one way to work because it, 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 the criteria is it has to be faculty led, number one. Number two, it has to have a partner institution in China. Number three, it has to have a U.S. credit by participating. So with, if you meet those three qualifications, criteria, then you can submit a proposal that you have a chance to get approved. And once you get approved, you can enroll as, many, as few as six students, as many as no more than 30 students in your program. All the students enrolled in this program are qualified to apply for this scholarship. Except, correct me if I understand it, you, that the Chinese citizens, if the students in your program is Chinese citizen, this, per, this student may not be qualified, correct? They may not be qualified for scholarship, but they can still travel on their own. Okay. Okay, yeah, because this scholarship is for international uh, student scholarship. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, and following with Su uh, Sufi, 
uh, you just mentioned it because the next question is asking how many students can be in the group. So you have answered that it can be as, as less as six, uh, no more than 30 as a cohort. Um, can more than one faculty? Well, the, the faculty is how many faculties entirely uh, up, 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 up to uh, the sending institution. Um, only that the scholarships cannot provide to the faculty. The scholarship is for students. Uh, and, and also you ask with the, uh, it will be uh, cultural uh, excursions, activities, training classes. That's entirely up, uh, up to how you design with your partner institutions in China. It could be, definitely could be included. It, but the key it, is, but the key is the program that is credited uh, by US institutions because students will be happy to join if the program is part of your part of his academic study. And uh, also the next question is, can the credits be adjust just from the US institution for US students? Yes, this credit has to be the US credits. Yeah. Uh, the, the following question, are there support to help building partnerships and connections with participating Chinese institutions? Yes because I think by introducing you a Chinese faculty member to start with articulation, that's where we can start the, the partnership and communication. And once this uh, proposal is approved, you will bring your students to that campus because another thing is that this scholarship, the money will not come to your students. The money will be paid to the Chinese institution to cover all your students' expenses when they are, when your class happen on the Chinese campus. So- But the, Sufi, but the stipend will be paid to students. The okay, stipend. Oh, uh, yes, the tuition will not, but the stipend will be paid to the students when they are uh, in China in this program. Yeah, the tuition, uh, the healthcare, um, accommodation will be paid to the hosting institutions. Uh, the stipend will pay to students. And the, the, the next question is, is there a limit number of proposals that will be accepted? Uh, I don't think so. How many no. scholars you're working on it? I don't think there's a limit and at this moment. Maybe we have, maybe this program getting popular we have limited uh, scholarship available, then there might be a limit, but not now. You can, you can propose as many as you, you can now. This scholarship, we have 20, what I learned is this, the announcement was, uh, uh, this scholarship was announced by Ambassador, Ambassador Chui Tiankai uh, for US institutions. There will be 2,500 scholarships each year for this short term. So we, um, right now, there's no limit and we don't even have a limit at this time for how many proposals. If you have three proposals submitted by the same institution, as long as it's, it, it meets the minimum qualification and it gets approved, all three, so all three could be accepted. So there'll be no limits for like, we only take one proposal from each institution. If you have different departments, faculties try to submit with different areas, different field, uh, they're all considered. What is cost for faculty while staying with students on campus? Uh, I think it depends, but it definitely Actually, will be cheaper than when you travel travel with your students uh, uh, faculty lab program you, you did previously, if you, if you stay in the hotel. I think for the faculty, most likely they could be accommodated in on-campus uh, guest house or something like that. They always have this kind of facilities. Uh, you'll be, I think it will be very um, reasonable to stay on campus and the conditions are good. I think for most of the institutions, they all have this kind of facilities. Not we, a big deal. Had, we had a previous experiences that for those faculty-led programs, 
the students who are staying on campus dorms. And if you work out with your partner institutions, um, there is a chance that they are willing to cover the accommodations for the faculty as long as you're working out. But it's not going to, it's not covered as part of the, the scholarship award. But uh, we do see that the Chinese part, uh, partner institutions say, well, if you bring all those students here, we'll do the work and we'll cover your, they will provide your room and board. Basically, that's the way. So the cost will be for the faculty is the international airfare also. It'll be a res your own responsibility. Um, also for the, um, someone, I, let me see, um, the, okay. So I'm going to the next, Sufi. Yes. When would the students know if they are awarded the scholarship? Uh, at the schedule listed just uh, just now, Sufi listed, uh, students need to apply online by um, January 15th. January 20th. January 20th or 15th, yeah, around that time. So they will get the uh, uh, result before March, I think just before the China's Spring Festival starts. So they will be um, um, informed if they got the scholarship um, by, I think by March. So they have plenty of time to prepare uh, for their summer. I, I, because I think this program will be, will be really popular uh, for summer. So students can be informed the scholarship uh, result by March. So there are plenty of time. Yes, so in general, um, we're gonna be here to provide the guidance, the help and the manage, support the applicants who want to submit this proposal because there are, um, you may have questions. So we'll be here to help answer the questions and we may need to organize a, a separate workshop inviting those who want to apply, who submitted the proposal to help you to um, how to prepare those proposal. Once you received the approval, um, you will train the fac leading faculty to how to advise the students to prepare the online application. Because our previous experiences that um, people, um, the students may be confused about how to do those applications. We work with the students all the time. So we will provide a detailed um, workshops or answer questions and it will be proposed a, um, like a sample uh, Q&A and sample application. So we will provide all the sorts of help to help first to help the faculty to submit the proposal. And then with the approval, we will provide the, 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 the guidance and help the students to apply for the scholarships. And uh, if they're during this time, if the faculty has any questions, we work with closely with the faculty, with the institutions, try to um, prepare, even help with the visa applications and help the departure, pre-departure orientations, because we have experience dealing with the faculties who will travel to China, it's their first trip to China, or the students, a lot of times the students, uh, the parents even trying to convince the parents to let them go. And we are a work as a group to help, um, to provide all sorts of support to help the students and the faculties. So um, we will answer all, all kinds of um, questions if you keep asking here. We have one, how many total proposals can be funded with scholarships? Well, as, as Susan just uh, talked about, um, we don't have a limit now uh, for proposals because we, 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 we thought we, when just started, uh, people may not aware of this program. Uh, but I can't say exactly how many, but there are plenty of scholarships available now. Um, for, for, for next year. Mm -hmm. um, she, so I think that number. Yeah. The, the, the limit is 
only when 2,500 scholarships are met, then there will be a limit. That's our understanding. But as at this time, as my understanding is that um, you, we have no limits for how many proposals could be submitted from each institute. So if you have three faculties, five faculties from different departments, submit five proposals, uh, we will be considered in a big pool. We were not saying this is, you have one faculty already, yeah. so we don't accept a second and third. So, and then because doing that proposal, you will need, you, we will know how many students you plan to enroll. So that will help us to manage, um, well, you know, to provide information to the selection committee. And have we met the quota 2,500 scholarships yet? The scholarships are for each students. Proposals are for faculty based on institutions. Um, can I add that because these programs are designed uh, is project based. So it's, it's very important that the proposal, if the proposal approved, is very much the university, the US university's responsibility to select the students. If you select the student and the and uh, with well, it's kind of a collaborative uh, um, work with your partner institution in China. If you uh, selected the students, we trust that your the quality will be good. So the student will be very much likely, very likely to get the scholarship because we really look at your proposal. Your proposal is good. We trust you have good students selected under that proposal. <laughs> so it's very likely they can get the scholarship. Uh, sorry, I clicked around. I, I don't the know. other one, I, I saw one uh, Shanghai conservatory, yeah, right? I click it and then it disappeared. Um, yeah, yes, Shanghai conservatory, is, it is with the uh, university list for the scholarship as program. As long as the list, the university is listed under that I just uh, showed you. Yeah, the website. Yeah. So, yeah. And for uh, um, <clears throat> three credit hours, that is three hours a week uh, for US standards. Are there going to be supplemental activities required? Assuming that. Uh, I can answer this. What do you I think? Can. I think, well, I think the one uh, Julie Whistlow just asked if. if if students are in China for a three credit class, that is three hours a week in class for US students. We we don't know actually. We don't know the how your your class or credit are arranged. It's it's entirely up to you and your partner institutions for any academic kind of stuff. As long as you're happy with all your your system, whatever, it's, it's yeah, entirely it's up to you. The faculty has the um, uh, freedom to decide how many credits you want to give to this to this course, and uh, what are the activities and how the format, the lecture, field trips, yeah. side it's field trips. Really up to the institutions to decide. Yeah. As, as long as you have that signature sheet get approved with mm -hmm. all, all signatures, yes, join it to be can the program focus on any, yes, any discipline? There's no limit of discipline, academic I discipline. Think, I like this discussion. That gives us um, also the way to think how to um, help with your, so um, we appreciate all the, um, the, the questions. And uh, um, let's see. Um, for, let's see the any um, for the stipend I want to just share um, <clears throat> it has um, the, the the students get the stipend about if it's undergraduate student it it is pro approximately approximately about a two twenty five twenty five hundred RMB. Per month, which 
is about three to four hundred. Um, it's let's see, twenty five hundred. Um, and for graduate students, and also it, it you could have the graduate students in the program. It's not just an undergraduate. Uh, you, it could be undergraduate students or graduate students. So uh, there's a little bit difference between the stipend to undergraduate students is 2,500 RMB. For graduate students is 3,000 RMB per month. So if you have six weeks, then they'll be um, uh, at another half of it. Um, uh, yeah, the stipend is really just for for the for your for the food and everything. Okay, because the accommodation, uh, uh, healthcare, accommodation, healthcare, tuition all covered. Yeah, the stipend is is just for your pocket money. Mm -hmm. The U.S. Oh. University has to pay the faculty tuition salary, faculty salary, faculty salary. Uh, yeah, I think that's right. I think because uh, as I mentioned uh, uh, at the beginning, this kind of this program program were designed based on the faculty led uh, study abroad program in China. You you your faculty led students go into China anyway, but now with the scholarship program and with working with Chinese students, you can maybe just at least double your number of students who can participate. Um, yes, the, 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 the scholarship cannot cover anything for the faculty. Oh, here's another one. If a graduate student delivered English classes to Chinese students, for example, can that graduate student get an additional stipend? Uh, I don't know. That's not that's not the scholarship arrangement. It might be you can talk with your partner institution in China. They might be able to get some something by teaching. Well, I don't know. <laughs> Probably um, and all those details. I think you can you can you can talk with your with your um, host institutions. I. I yeah, think but to be aware that it might be uh, might be legally doing those those kind of stuff. But anyway, the scholarship doesn't cover for any extra. It's a fixed kind of scholarship program, uh, level, seven level. I think all the, the, those questions. It uh, once you have a partner. Um, teaching faculty with your partner institutions, um, they probably, those who, those who are not covered under the scholarship, for example, for the faculty, for the leading faculty uh, to go to China or to bring a graduate assistant on the trip to help with the students, et cetera, the faculty and the TA may not be qualified to apply for the scholarship. However, working by working with your partner institutions, they are um, for the next two sessions of our webinar on the 8th and the 15th, you will find out there are more other scholarship opportunities to, um, to help you to um, financially to cover partially uh, or cover completely. So um, for this particular one, the scholarship is only for the students who are in your class that the proposal is approved for this ASSCI. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I think um, this program is really to support and encourage institutional collaboration. Um, and students who join this program, even for a short period of time, may build their interest in studying in China. So if there are any students after your program, student interest in doing a, a degree or doing a long-term like a, a, a academic year or do a, a master degree or whatever, 
to China, there are also other scholarships available they can apply. Correct. We um, we have uh, because there are um, I know there are other um, other opportunities that for scholarships that um, outside of this specific program that all the, the students and the faculties could apply for it. Um, any other questions? Uh, let me try to see. If there I, any... don't see I don't see any more questions. Um, so I think what, what I, I really appreciate the questions and that will help us. What, what follows is that um, we will send out a, um, a email to all today's participants and uh, uh, with a link about where you can get the proposal form and, uh, and the emails that where you, you will send it to. And also on that, um, that link, you will get other, uh, the Q and A because uh, all those questions we try to put together so uh, help um, people to understand what exactly is and what are the timelines, what are the procedures, and how what kind of support you will get, and how we can uh, we welcome any questions. And if you have any problems, um, you can kind contact us. So we will work with the embassy. Um, they have a the embassy. Madame Yang has a great team that are getting the information to um, to to answer the questions immediately, very quickly. Uh, I think because the program actually launched uh, in um, November twenty nineteen, but because last year because of the pandemic, uh, the program was not really promoted much. Uh, there were a few number of applications, proposals uh, previously, that will be still count. So we'll look at that uh, um, proposal, I, if, just in case people are online uh, who have submitted the proposal uh, in 2020, they will be still considered. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for letting us know. Um, so I know there are a couple of them. Um, if I think if you have a copy, or it, who has it? That's that's the question. Is that do they need to submit it again? Uh, I think they don't need. To, they, we have the we have their uh, proposals here with with uh, Gulei. Oh, so okay. That's great. That would be great. Yeah. Okay. Be, yeah. Okay. Um, we have um, we have um. I think this is a very uh, good session and very active participation. Um, we any other questions at the last few minutes? Um, if not, we will let uh, Madame Yang Xin Yu to um, close today's session. Um, we are looking forward to working with you um, with, with any problems, any uh, any issues. CNMS for here is too happy to help. We we'll work with the, uh, the embassy, try to get all the information that uh, will help you to apply for. So, uh, Qin Yu. Yes, uh, thank you uh, for participating, participating in this uh, uh, session. And thank you, Sufi and Samnam S4 for managing, uh, help managing this uh, uh, program. We really want to see uh, such a well-structured, uh, well-organized program can benefit U.S. students, uh, and we really encourage more institutions to uh, participate and provide with your students more opportunities. And uh, I hope this could be a long-term program, not not studying in China long-term, but it's a, a we can uh, it's a sustainable sustainable program uh, that we can see um, maybe after years we can see the outcome of of this. Uh, kind of program and thank you very much and I also we would welcome any proposals any uh, comments or any suggestions on any study in China programs thank you very much thank you Sufi
Thank you. Thank you for all. And we will see you in another time. Thank you, Madam Yangxin. You really appreciate the support. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you.